Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and happy Valentine's Day guys. Sorry if I sound a little bit weird. I fell asleep with my fan on and now my voice is a little bit, it's a little bit scratchy. My throat's a little bit messed up. But today, wow, okay. So I, I released that video the other day about Clefairy being the biggest thing to come out of Pokemon Home because Incineroar isn't legal. And guess what? <laughs> they just announced on Twitter, Incineroar, yes, it is legal, as well as the other starters released within uh, the Pokemon Home release. So uh, we also have the Kanto starters as well as the Alola starters. However, we already had Charizard. So that's actually just enough Pokemon to fit into a single Pokemon Showdown team builder. So I'll go ahead and I'll go over each one of these guys. But the main focus of today's video is going to be Incineroar. So we'll start off with him. If you guys enjoy this same point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. And be sure to answer the comment question of the day. But yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get into it. So Incineroar. Um... The thing is, Incineroar, the last time that we had him introduced into a format midway through, it completely changed the entire format. It lifted the format from the ground up and just mixed it all together, and then we ended up with the best of both worlds. I watched a lot of Hannah Montana the other day. Anyways, so... Incineroar is such an amazing Pokemon because if you look at its stats, 95 HP, 115 attack, 90 defense, 80 special attack, 90 special defense, and 60 speed. The speed is the only thing that's just kind of average, but it doesn't really need it to function. Incineroar is arguably the best Intimidate Pokemon in the format, as well as the best Fake Out Pokemon in the format now that it's been released. The reason this is, is because Fire and Dark is an excellent dual typing. It gives it a lot of coverage, and it also is a pretty decent defensive typing, only being weak to Fighting, Rock, Ground, and Water. Uh, forgive me if I'm missing something, I believe that is it. Uh, so it's actually really really good now. I don't expect Incineroar to be one of the best Dynamax Pokemon You could probably see an Incineroar take advantage of uh, Weakness policy while Dynamaxing because Intimidate will give it a little bit more physical bulk and the Dynamax will Increase on its already great special defense stat if you guys didn't watch my other video or not special defense stat. If you guys didn't watch my other video I explained why having a great HP stat is important to Dynamaxing. I think Incineroar could be a decent Dynamax Pokemon But what it's gonna function best at is as a support Pokemon so the two sets I have today are going to be a normal, you know, support Pokemon, uh, you know, with a bit of offensive potential, and like an offensive assault vest Pokemon with some support. So the first set is going to be Figgy Berry Intimidate. Uh, this is pretty much reminiscent of what we saw in 2018. However, now it gets a new move in Parting Shot. Now, giving Parting Shot, in my opinion, uh, to Incineroar was a mistake. Parting Shot is one of the best pivoting moves in the game. It lowers their attack and special attack by one stage and switches him out. So we might see this Incineroar actually opt for a bit more speed, maybe less attack, probably more HP. This is just a very general set. So the reason it might opt for more speed is because that will allow it to uh, get a faster fake out off versus opposing fake out Pokemon, as well as let it pivot out immediately while lowering their stats. Now, before, uh, using U-Turn Slow was amazing, it got you a free switch in, but there may be some situations where you might just want to go ahead and lower their stats, get them to minus two attack, minus one special attack, just by switching it in and parting shutting out, and getting in something for free, like a setup Pokemon, uh, which we'll see, we might have found one of the best setup Pokemon in Pokemon history uh, in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this thing is going to be amazing. Uh, it also has access to some pretty cool moves. Uh, it gets Roar, not that that's the most important thing in this format right now. Uh, it was actually pretty big in 2019 because it allowed it to stop things like set up Xerneas. Um, but as we can see, it actually gets some pretty decent coverage. Uh, it gets a Nasty Plot to help it out. Uh, it gets a Low Kick actually, which is really, really cool for it. Uh, low Kick will allow it to deal with Steel types in the format. Uh, however, I don't think we have too many huge Steel types right now. Caparaja isn't really something that comes to mind. Uh, when I think of things that are really threatening. Uh, however, that is really, really good for dealing with Tyranitar in particular. You you can definitely EV this guy to one-shot a Tyranitar as well as take a hit from it, especially since it has Intimidate. Along with that, you don't even have to run that move. Low Kick is really great for dealing with Tyranitar, but you could also run Close Combat instead to uh, just get all-around great damage. So, I, I wouldn't recommend this in the Figure Berry set. Personally, I feel like um, you're fine with like Flare Blitz, Darkest Lair at, but if we do find that uh, we don't really want to run uh, Darkest Lair at, then I would drop it for a fighting move to allow you to deal with things like Sand Offense a bit better. But also, Darkest Lair at, this thing is one of the best Dragapult, <laughs> Dragapult checks that I've ever seen. I stuttered on my words right there. Dragapult does not do a thing to this Pokemon, especially the Assault Vest set since some people are running Special Dragapult. You get an Intimidate off if they're running something other than Clear Body, which I'm not a fan of. However, Infiltrator has been picking up in usage. Um, but you're going to be able to resist their dark or resist their ghost type moves 
and eat their dragon moves relatively fine. Like, it, it won't really matter too much because of how much bulk this guy has. Uh, and yeah, it's just you Darkest Lair at them. It's a stab Darkest Lair, which is pretty rare to see in this format. And it's just going to be really, really strong. Um, but yeah, this is this is challenging Grimmsnarl for the seat as, like, king of support Pokemon in this format. But uh, personally, I still think Clefairy is going to be really great, but they will work great synergistically as well. The other set is going to be Assault Vest. There isn't too much different of this set. You might end up running, like... Um, a little bit more special defense, less attack and such. And you're going to end up running Snarl, I believe. Snarl is going to be really, really, really good in this format. It helps you eat hits from things like Togekiss. It helps you weaken things uh, like Hatterene, which isn't too common right now. Um, but yeah, Snarl is just an all-around amazing move. It ignores redirection because it's both Pokemon. And Wide Guard isn't too great in this format. So yeah, like Incineroar has so many options when it comes to being a good support Pokemon. Um, it can do so many things. Like I, I would make an entire video about Incineroar, but I want to see where it goes in the format before I make that breakdown. But just know Incineroar usage is going to skyrocket. As soon as Incineroar was announced in 2018, it became the number one most used Pokemon. Arcanine, I'm sorry, bud. It's time to go in the kennel. The kitten is out. The kitten is here. The cat in the hat is back. And yeah, it's just going to be great. As for the next best Pokemon that we're going to get, Venusaur. Now, Venusaur is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. It was the original starter that I chose back in Kanto, and I still have it, actually. Uh, but this thing has Focus Sash, Chlorophyll set. Uh, <laughs> this thing has a Focus Sash and Chlorophyll set. I keep stuttering on my words because I'm, like, so, so tired today. Um, happy Valentine's Day, by the way, guys. Comment, I love you. Go ahead and comment, I love you, uh, just so I know you're still watching. But uh, this thing is actually probably going to make Vileplume irrelevant. For those of you who don't know, Vileplume is very, very common next to Torkoal. Torkoal is a drought-using Pokemon. Excuse my phone ringing. That's my girlfriend wanting and I want to come over. Uh, so drought is an ability that sets up the sun. And chlorophyll Pokemon like Vileplume were able to take advantage of that because that will double their speed in the sun and allow them to spam things like Sleep Powder, uh, Strength Sap. That's the one thing Vileplume still has over Venusaur Strength Sap. As soon as Venusaur gets Strength Sap, it's over for Vileplume. But Vileplume um, got After You, which After You would allow it to actually let Torkoal get its eruption off first. I don't believe Venusaur gets After You. Um, so yeah, Vileplume still actually has that over it as well. Uh, but the big thing here, the big thing here is that we have a great Grass-type Pokemon. This format is lacking in Grass-type Pokemon. It's to the point where our two best Grass-type Pokemon are Ferrothorn and <laughs> and Rotom Mo. In a format where Rotom Mo is considered one of the best Grass-type Pokemon, you know something's wrong. So Venusaur is going to be a great offensive Grass-type. It has great special bulk, pretty okay physical bulk as well, and its speed tier is so, so good. Uh, the reason I think it's going to be better than Vileplume is because if we look at a comparison here, I actually got this up. Uh, I think the most fast Pokemon you're going to experience in this format are going to be regular Jolly Dragapult and Choice Scarfic Excadrill, which reach 231 speed. So if we look at it, Vileplume at double speed will only hit uh, 224 speed, which is enough for it to outspeed Dragapult, but not choice scarf excadrill where if we look at venusaur venusaur is actually able to outspeed the excadrill because 145 times 2 will get you 290 speed making it one of the fastest pokemon in the entire format once the sun is up and it has chlorophyll activated along with that you don't even have to run protect on this thing you could run weather ball and in the sun it's going to allow you to one shot things like excadrill on top of that they gave it they gave this thing some pretty cool moves they gave this thing uh, a very important move in my opinion. It doesn't even have to run Weather Ball to beat Exodrill because guess what they gave it? Guess what they gave my boy? They gave this thing Earth Power. And with Earth Power, this thing can one shot. I, I saw the calculation on Twitter. I'm not sure um, what exactly it was, but it can one shot most Duraludon uh, given they're not Assault Vest. And that is disgusting. Venusaur is now a Duraludon check. Uh, granted, the thing has some pretty poo-poo garbage special defense, but it's still an amazing Pokemon. I'm super excited to see it in this format. I'll definitely be using it on one of my teams in the near future. So yeah, X or er, not X Drill, uh, Venusaur. Venusaur is one of the best for, uh, Pokemon we're going to be seeing this this format, in my opinion. Next up, we have Blastoise, and Blastoise got a really really huge buff. It is not Rain Dish. It is not Torrent. They gave this thing Shell Smash. Now, Shell Smash is really, really cool because it actually doubles your speed, special attack, and uh, attack by two stages. Like, you get it up two stages. Uh, and this thing already has some pretty decent speed. Once again, 143 speed. It's not too much slower than the um, speed that this Venus was going to reach at 145. And it's actually going to be really, really threatening because you can give this thing a focus sash. You could even try Redirection or, like, Grimmsnarl screen support to help you get 
that shell smash off and from that point on this 85 base special attack becomes much more threatening because it has great coverage it has dark type coverage and dark pulse it has fighting type coverage and aura sphere which cannot miss it can use ice beam to one shot dragapult and it still gets scald which is an amazing stab water type move which you can also pass up for something like hydro pump or if you're feeling really really confident in the fact that you're not going to get immediately just taken down to your focus sash with your um shell smash going off having your defense stats you could try running something like water spout water spout could be a devastating thing in this format the last time we saw water spout being used in this format was on something like jellison so if we take a look at jellison uh jellison isn't like the strongest pokemon but it has the same special attack stat as um as Blastoise in 85. However, it doesn't invest too heavily into it. It's more of a Trick Room Pokemon, and once the Trick Room's up, it's much easier for this thing to get its water spouts off. However, uh, Blastoise will likely be investing much more into Special Attack, and with that doubled Special Attack from Shell Smash, you could attempt a Water Spout Sweep, and at that point, it's very, very hard for your opponent to stop it, considering the absolute power that this thing's gonna be putting out. Uh, so I think Blastoise is going to be a really, really cool Pokemon to see in the format. I don't think it's going to be the most common Pokemon. However, it's definitely going to be on a couple of teams given the massive buffs it received this generation. On top of that, it gets Haze. Haze is cool. Haze is pretty okay in this format. It gets Life Dew. It gets a couple of other things. But for the most part, it's going to be that Shell Smashing set that's going to be really, really dangerous. Or even just like a Choice Scarf on this thing with, um, with Water Spout. Next up, we have Primarina. Primarina is the water type starter from the Alola region, the Sun and Moon games. And while I don't think this thing is going to be amazing in this format, I could actually see it being pretty okay. Uh, it does get Liquid Voice, which... Liquid Voice, I just completely messed up that word. Liquid Voice. It makes sound-based moves water type, so it doesn't have to run like Scald or anything. You could attempt to use Hyper Voice uh, for that spread 90 base power water type move. You could go with that over something like Muddy Water. However, I think a lot of people might... Uh, try to run something like Scald on this thing, given it doesn't get Muddy Water. Um, however, if you do want a spread move, you could try that Liquid Voice set. It also gets a really powerful Moonblast. The thing, this thing has 126 base special attack, which is really, really good. Uh, and given how slow this format is, 60 base speed isn't as awful as it used to be. Psychic is some pretty great coverage. I personally think it's going to be a good Assault Vest user, but something to note is that this is now another Parish Song Pokemon that we have in this format. Before, the only like viable Parish Song Pokemon we had was Lapras. And while Lapras is pretty good, it's much more defensive. This offers us more of an offensive Parish Song Pokemon, which I think is pretty interesting. I don't think a lot of things are going to be used in the Parish Song set. I think it's going to be more of an Assault Vesting offensive Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be pretty okay. It's going to be a decent water type Pokemon to pick, and the fairy typing definitely gives it uh, a lot of uh, viability in this format, considering how powerful things like Duraludon, um, which you can hit for neutral on the special defensive side, uh, and how powerful things like uh, Dragapult are. So that that's going to be a, a nice a nice niche for it, hitting those Pokemon. And also, it's pretty decent against Incineroar, in my opinion, just because you could try like Choice Specs or something. It's it's okay, it's okay. Uh, next up, we have Decidueye, which. I think Decidueye is actually going to be better than I initially thought it was going to be, and excuse me for EVing this thing wrong. Personally, I feel like Decidueye is going to definitely be a physical attacker, however you could try a special attacking set. Uh, 70 base speed, once again, with how slow this format is, 70 base speed is not at all bad. And granted how few grass types we have, you could try a Decidueye, poke, or a Decidueye team. I really wish this thing kept Tailwind. Unfortunately, it lost Tailwind with uh, the loss of Move Tutors. However, it does have a couple of cool moves on it. It does get things like uh, Solar Solar Blade, which isn't the biggest thing. Uh, however, it can use a Leaf Blade, Spirit Shackle, Sword Dance, Shadow Sneak set. Uh, personally, I don't think it's going to be the biggest Pokemon in the format. The thing that's going to be making the biggest impact. But I think it is still going to be viable. So I kind of rank these guys in order of viability, in my opinion. I think it goes Incineroar. Well, Incineroar twice, because that thing's disgusting. Venusaur, Blastoise, Primarina, and then Decidueye. I want to know what you guys think about this in the description down below. I gave my thoughts on some sets these guys can run. Um, so yeah, just let me know. Leave a like, subscribe for more Pokemon content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice Valentine's Day, guys. I love all of you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.